We're on the second page now. There's a lot of multiple choice on this page, um, and they're kind of some of our trickier things we do with exponents. So this one says iridium-192 is an isotope of iridium and has a half-life of 73.83 days. If a laboratory experiment begins with 100 grams of iridium, the number of grams A of iridium-192 present after T days would be represented by this function. So they've written the half-life function for you already. Which equation approximates the amount of iridium-192 present after T days? Okay. So it's tricky. Basically, I'm asking for another equation written in a different way. So looking at the different ones, the main thing we learned how to do with these functions is to write them in A times B to the T form. So I'm going to take off the fraction, so 1 over 73.83, and write the T next to it. So it's like I'm writing the T over here. So we type this in, okay, and that's going to give us 0 0.990656. We type in that part. And that shows us a basic formula, which shows us the amount after T days. So it's just writing it in that basic formula, so it would be this one. You can also graph each one. Three is the only one that would end up being the same answer. Uh, the next one says Kellyanne has 20000 to invest. She puts half of the money into an account that grows at an annual rate of 0.9% compounded monthly. At the same time, she puts the other half of the money into an account that grows continuously at an annual rate of 0.8%. Which function represents the value of Kellyanne's investment after T years? So I actually think it's easier to start with the second part that says growing continuously. So that piece of it is PERT. So I'm going to write that piece of it over here. We're putting half of it in. So she's doing two accounts, half and half. So this is 10,000, half of the 20,000 in the one count. So P, E to the R, be careful, we have to move it over two and then T, right? So we're going to take this and move the decimal over two. Now, immediately, these, they didn't move the decimal over two, so I can cross those two out. These two, they did. So I'm down to either two or four. So now we're going to pay attention to the first part of the equation, or the first part of the word problem. She puts half of the money into an account that grows at an annual rate of 0.9% compounded monthly. So that piece of it, we're putting the other 10,000 into 1 plus r over n to the nt, so this is going to be 0 0.009 over 12 to the 12t. Now, this is pretty tricky, and it's actually a bad question, because if you type in the whole thing from here to here, okay, it comes out to almost 1.009, but that's not exactly correct. If I type this part in, okay, it comes out to exactly the 1.00075. So I don't like the fact that question two is pretty close to being right, but question four is the one that's perfect because we see that first part is the same. This isn't really necessary to solve the question, but why we have this addition here is because we're adding the amounts in the two accounts, so that's why we have the two functions added together. The next one says, on average, college students graduating in 2012 could compute their growing student loan debt using the function d of t equals 28,400 times 1.068 to the t, where t is time in years. So that's a function showing years. Which expression is equivalent to, so we want something that is the same thing as that function we have and could be used by students to identify an approximate daily interest rate on their loans. So our formula has time in years. If we want to go to days, we want to do something with a 365 because that's how many days are in a year. So the way we do that, first off, to change time, we have to be in the exponent. So instead of having this as the base, a day is smaller than the year, so we want a piece of that. So we want 1 365th of that. Now we want to keep it equivalent, so if we're going to put that fraction with the base, we have to put a 365 out here to cancel it out. So that is choice four. Um, you would see choice one has part of it, but it definitely is not equivalent. You can't just throw in a fraction and have it be equivalent. Uh, on this one, also not equivalent. We can see it definitely doesn't give us the same answer. 
This one's actually the closest, but this dividing would not cancel with that exponent, so it's not going to be equivalent. The last one says a student studying public policy created a model for the population of Detroit, where the population decreased 25% over a decade. He used this model, where P is the population in thousands, D decades after 2010. Another student, Suzanne, wants to use a model that would predict the population after Y years. Suzanne's model is best represented by which? So we see this decreases by 25% came from 1 minus 0.25. So that's where we got the 0.75 from. Don't really need to know that to do the problem, but just to give a little background. Now, we're actually changing the variable here. So we're not writing an equivalent equation. We're writing a new equation for years versus decades. So I'm going to take the base from the decades. And if I'm going to a year, I'm getting smaller. So I'm going to take one tenth of that base, right? Because a decade or a year is one tenth of a decade. I type that in and I would get 0.9716. So we don't need a balancing number. We're writing a new equation with a Y instead of a D to represent years versus um, decades. And choice three shows that new base.